Okay, uh, my name's uh, Ken Kellett uh, here at Fantasy of Flight, and I'm back working on the uh, Jenny project uh, that I started quite a while back. Um, can't quite remember actually when I did start this project, but we've had some other things to deal with. Uh, some airplanes we took up to Oshkosh, the World War I stuff, uh, the sop with pup that I had to finish up, our little mishap with the cowling coming up off on the test flight. Uh, created a little backup. Uh, prior to Oshkosh, uh, I, I did do some different things on the airplane. Um, the paintwork is just about complete. There's a couple of things. The ailerons and the elevators are not painted yet. And the reason for that is because uh, I wasn't, there's a top and a bottom and there's cut to fit and paint to match and that's the way these airplanes are. So I didn't really know what the top or the bottom of those pieces were because you could flip them upside down and put them on the other side. So I didn't want to put the drain grommets on the wrong side. So I wanted to make sure that those pieces were in the, their correct positions on the airplane so that I know what the top is uh, and the bottom so that we can put the drain grommets on first and then we can finish the paintwork. So it's not like a big deal, but I, I really did want to get that right because uh, believe it or not, that does happen once in a while and drain grommets on the top of a wing don't really do you much good. Uh, the rondelles were laid out and painted uh, when the weather permitted here, uh, our little weather window uh, to get that done. I was able to lay out the insignia on the fuselage Uh, and get, uh, get that all done. So the paintwork is just about complete. Also, one of the other things I did was to finish up the cockpit combing that goes around the, uh, the openings of the pilots uh, in the airplane. Um, that was a little more involved than I actually thought it would be. Um, but uh, I have accomplished that and gotten those all grommeted and laced onto the airplane and they all fit and look nice. So, um, so that's done. Um, the seats were installed. Uh, just to bring you up to date on a couple of issues, um, was uh, getting to a point where I was ready to put the wings on and rig it. And I put the center section on. And these are the cabane struts that, uh, that came with the project. And uh, so when I, I put the center section on, which is the the little narrow piece that sits above the fuselage there. Uh, I dropped some plumb bobs to see what the stagger was to the lower wing. And on the JN4D, which this airplane is, that stagger is supposed to be 16 inches. We had 12 inches. This is part of the drawings. It's the table of variations for the different uh, Curtis airplanes. And you see the original prototype, the JN4, the 4A, uh, the production 4A, that was the prototype, the 4B, 4C, the Canadian version, the Canuck, our airplane, the JN4D, the D2, also the production D2, prototype D2, uh, 4H, and 6H. And when we go down here to the staggers, you can see they had different staggers. The original prototype had a 10 and 3 8 inch stagger. Our airplane, which is the JN4D, is a 16 inch stagger. We had 12 inches. And so um, we're trying to figure out why is this the case. And so with a little digging, we found out that the cabane struts that we had, these, were the wrong ones. Uh, they were made for a different model. Jenny, you can see they're just straight all the way. And so our stagger was only 12 inches with, with these. So I had to go back and uh, Ken Hyde up in Virginia was kind enough to send us a drawing of what the cabane strut was supposed to be like. And so I carved new ones. And as you can see, 
This one's got a little dog leg in it. So when I set it on here like that, you can see the difference. So there's our four inches right there. So, um, so we had to make new struts and I'm still in the process of making the aluminum end pieces that go on the top and the bottom. So they're not quite done, so I can't uh, put the center section on and go ahead and put the wings on. So we're going to jump to something else, and that is to go ahead and finish up the front end. Andy's got the engine done now. It's over in the machine shop, uh, ready to go into the airplane, and we're going to be putting it in in just a few days now. But before I did that, I put the, uh, the radiator uh, on the airframe and the side panels. And the one piece of sheet metal that was not done on the airplane was the top cowling that you see up here. Cutting some sections out of it that allow the engine to poke out of the cowling. But that needed to be accomplished actually before the engine goes into the airplane. Uh, prior to that, of course, I put the fuel tank in. Uh, the firewall was finished off. Uh, instrument panels were mounted. Um, the rest of the sheet metal, again, was, was uh, trial fitted uh, because we're coming up on the point where we need to uh, roll some uh, beads into the sheet metal uh, like the original. We actually didn't have equipment here that would do that, so we went ahead and ordered uh, a machine and now we have that in the machine shop so that we can finish off that sheet metal. purposes like in this situation you set your spacing accordingly although this is just a sample it will allow the belt to lay in here for a, basically a channel so it traps the, the strap or the belt uh, once these pieces are done uh, we can paint them um, the engine's going to go in we have a new prop sitting over here uh, from Sensenich ready to go on the airplane and we'll be doing all the final hookup of the carburetors and all of that good stuff so uh, so it's coming along. So tail feathers have been uh, put on. Uh, all the cables have been uh, hooked up. Everything works the way it's supposed to work. I'm kind of anxious to get the center section back on the airplane uh, so that I can go ahead and put the upper wings on it. As you can see right now, the lower wings are hanging on the airplane and I'd like to get the rigging gone through and see if we can rig this thing out and get it ready to go. All the cables were just in a big pile and so most of them weren't even marked so we didn't know where those cables went. So on the wing now I've, I've actually put all the cables uh, together where they're supposed to be. Um, all the turnbuckles needed to be re-tapped so that the threads would clean them out. Uh, a lot of the parts had to be sent out for CAD plating, uh, so uh, we've gotten that accomplished. I've got seat belts now that are being uh, made up uh, to the original uh, that, that will be here soon. Also one of the things we did was uh, the belts that uh, hold the cowling on. Uh, you can see here we've, uh, we've put those on to pull that cowling down tight on the airplane. Uh, that was something that had to be accomplished. Uh, before we could really go any further. So all the little pieces are kind of falling into place now. Um, the, uh, there's not really too many more things to actually sort out uh, on the airplane. Actually, it, we're kind of at a point now where we're, we really are close to getting the engine in, getting it all hooked up, uh, getting the wings on the airplane, and rigging it. And at that point, it's, it's pretty close to being done.